Top 10 puzzles I did in Hunting Alley 2.0. One day the beta testers were hired to work on a brand new and powerful web platform called, well, Hunting Alley 2.0. Much of the work involved taking on puzzles, some made quite the impact. As usual, I'll still all the puzzles in the hunt. Now jack in and transmit, on to the top 10. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean by... Not questions and answers, but with some communication shenanigans by a voice assistant, Alexa. I'm referring to this spelling, but that's part of the first gimmick of synonyms and homonyms to give more context to the questions so we can get the answers. Some of the puns that I worked on were quite nice, like Paw Patrol and Mission Impossible. Really, these puns are the highlight of the puzzle. And I like how one of them is a riff on that one text conversation. But the hard part is extraction. Turns out that it's another one of those creative sneaking ones, the Q and the A serving as indices to get the answer. Well, almost, because you do the homonym again. That fast? We're taking on the heights with a skyscraper logic puzzle. The skyscraper logic puzzle is kinda like Sudoku, but with numbers indicating heights. Now this adds an extra gimmick of pieces being identical, which corresponds to identical numbers. Still, it's nice getting some deductions while working through the new constraints. But then my teammate got the answer and the grid isn't really only halfway done. Quite the speed shocker. How many zeros are there? Time to dive in on layer after layer of mini puzzles. The easiest ones and the ones I got through were the 1020 and 60. Figuring out the verb tense gimmick was very nice considering my experience with grammar. But the harder ones were the ones with three to five zeros. The three zeros have a maze, but there's a hidden secret with the American flag. And I couldn't believe that the fourth one is basically a music axis rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise. After getting all the mini puzzle answers, we gotta extract the answer in a pure meta way. Turns out that we gotta make use of structure as the length distance meant making a stack to result in the answer of runtime stack, fitting for the recursive nature. Time to get things under order. So far, I've talked about the first batch of work, but then everything changed upon examining the vision that quite disrupted the internet. And now we gotta find the usernames of the three higher-ups, Scarlet, Ruby, and Brick, so we can chat with them on fixing the internet. Scarlet had a peculiar gimmick with sin and opposites, while Ruby involved pano flames and pronunciation challenges, but the journey I liked the most is the one getting Brick's username. In Brick's domain, we had to work, well, domain in two ways. Of course, there's a top-level internet domain, but I sensed another train of thought from the organically part, which is animal classification from good old biology class. The rest involved completing clue phrases, substitutions, and extraction order to figure out that Brick's domain is life hacks. Of the three metas, this is the first one that we solve, and for good reason. It's nice and simple. But the dual use of domain really fits this nicely, too. The gag's even funnier when you saw who wrote it. Taking one last look at the puzzles before that internet got disrupted in the main countdown. Here's another one of those nice speedy ones, and wow, the writer has quite the self-esteem. But that made identification easy. I also observed how reading the first letters led to instruction on counting the appearances of me to get the index and the answer. What made this even though notable and amusing is that at the actual writer's name of the puzzle is actually Max. In fact, in the development of the hunt, the test solvers had an eye roll and a smirk when trying out that puzzle. Good one, Max! There are so many errors to fix. Wow, that first draft of that crossword is hilariously bad. Not only are the words jumbled up, but many clues have errors and there are words not on the grid. But that led to the interesting gimmick of finding and highlighting the errors and clues respectively in the grid. These errors are of a specific type, and some clues that don't have errors can sneakily blend in, so we gotta be watchful in that story. Eventually, the highlights led to a pattern that happened to have one thing off, confirmed by one of the clues that does not have an error. And then these extra things off can form another pick, with one thing off that happens to be the answer. This may be a rough puzzle craft, but it's also a very creative setup with a very creative premise to the puzzle that I've seen. Really, the worst of worst crossword ever might be another error after all. Some assembly required! In the quest to contract Ruby, there are plenty of puzzling challenges to figure out their password. And of the seven I found, here's two that I liked. In order of unlock time is cryptic images. It's cryptics, but you have to figure out the definition and wordplay from the images while sorting everything out. The next step of putting the picks together took a while to figure out, especially with the sideways numbers. But the final image put together looked impressive, and figuring out the final answer was very satisfying. Next up is Make Your Own Puzzle Hunt, where you can let automation do the work. Well, sorta, as it turns out that we gotta make it fit close enough to one of those past Puzzle Hunt events. But revisiting Darrow Kara was nice. 
We also took a look at a bingo board similar to what Alex Erpian does, which also makes a setup to extract the final clue phrase then answer. Now deciding between the two is a really close call, but in the end, while Cryptic Images has a nice finish once the challenges are complete, Make Your Own Puzzle Hunt has a very slight edge from a smoother solve process, and this put Cryptic's images in 4th place while Make Your Own Puzzle Hunt takes the bronze. In fact, there's also one tiny detail from Make Your Own Puzzle Hunt that gives it an edge. I wonder what happens if I turn out a puzzle hunt with zero puzzles. Ready, set... When it comes to feeders in the Sin Meta to get Scarlet's password, it's no surprise that one of them had some devilry responsible for that. Differences starts off with some fair printer devilry, the puzzle type that involves inserting another word to make a phrase that makes more sense. Except this time, there's even more words to insert. Technically, two parts of a semantic set, but some of the words are split up even more, making the piecing together even more convoluted. But what made the puzzle fairly noteworthy for me was figuring out the next steps. Considering the clue phrase and the semantic sets, we take the difference to take another element, then find shared elements as an index. And we really didn't have to do all of them to find the answer of Camper. Finding the difference gimmick was very satisfying, as it felt like I knew I was doing. Before my top pick, here's honorable mentions in order of unlock time. Blockchain, part cryptic, part shikaku, but with a challenging gimmick. Morose codes, cycles of creative ways to use dots and dashes. Triangular moves, when Sailor Moon meets triangular chess puzzles. And one more honorable mention. After getting contact with the three higher-ups, we encountered an impossible meta-meta. But hey, solving that wasn't so horrible. Wait, what happened to the answer checker? Well, looks like we need to assemble a new answer checker, but we need to access the personal sites of the three higher-ups. But they not only forgot the passwords, but also left it to us to access those websites. The password search involved many versions of prior puzzles, which led to a series of smaller puzzles that would later become a part of the final meta and final honorable mention. Not much really personally resonated with me, but upon putting together the smaller puzzles and car parts to create a way for a machine, we had a satisfying finale as we managed to get to the finish and fix the internet. All's well that ends well, eh? Now for my top pick. I like puzzles that I can solve. On Sunday morning, I decided to take a look at one of Brick's Fear's puzzles, and here we go. Whoa, this looks complicated. And some of the numbers and facts change. My first order of business is figuring out the numbers. Time to spam the refresh button to gain data on what the numbers are, making the correspondence lead to binary calls which help me see I'm on the right track. Then the bulk of the puzzle is figuring out the factor fictions. Some of them are number substitutions and the math isn't too bad, but others involve figuring out the gimmick of when the facts appear, which require me to do some more investigation, like when some facts appear. Eventually, after looking at how one fact always seems to appear as well as thinking about the times when many facts show up, I then get the sense that this is about prime factorization. Eventually, after getting through the true or false and extracting the binary, I get the result of absinthe. And all I get is a keep going. But then the realization of looking at the TH that I could consider calculating which facts could show up manually. And in the end, I managed to solo the puzzle with the answer of Gordita right before my church started. There's a lot to unpack that I really like aside from the sense of the accomplishment of doing it all myself. For one, the double use of binary and the do it again step is very neat. There's also the time where I get to put my math and logic skills to good use. For example, taking on the two facts about summing two primes. Part of the process also involved doing calculations when I didn't know all the numbers yet, where a sense of estimation and balance can help with deducing the solution. And when I get to see all that work out when taking on this puzzle, it can be very refreshing for me to see. And that wraps up my look back at Huntinality 2.0, and if there's one word to sum up the hunt overall, it's chaos. Especially with the site changing upon the internet disruption and how that Huntinality 2.0 role ultimately ended up being a virus. There's great scope not only in the impact, but also in the hunt, going beyond that of the first Huntinality instructor. Shout out to the crew at Huntinality for putting that all together, and I hope you all get some good rest. And for viewers like you, thank you!